What was it like being raised in an unusual environment like a boat traveling the world touring with a family band, or with interesting parents? Genius is famous very popular. I grew up in a spiritual environment where my parents were shamans. Then they explored different religions, eventually converted to one, twice, and dragged me through three different continents, and three different countries by the age of 12. Throughout my entire school years I switched through nine different schools. I was always really jealous of the kids that lived in one place for their entire lives, had family in their country and a group of friends from when they were young. I had a similar childhood, not with religion but my mum just running from her problems. I went to so many schools in so many cities. I know how you feel when you say you'd be jealous of kids with stability. Me too. Had a friend who spent a few years on a boat growing up. It was when he was around 10-14. It was him his parents and his sister. He's got interesting stories but the one takeaway that always comes to mind is that he can't no longer eat bananas. At some point they prepped for a portion of their trip that was going to have them for a few months. They loaded up on banana and he had to eat 2-4 every day. He's in his early 30s now and will not touch a banana. Parents owned a bar and music venue. I was exposed to a wealth of art, culture, and people that most parents try to shield their children from. Pros. I am very knowledgeable about art and people. Cons. My parents were too busy doing C to bother parenting me much. It sounds like a cross between the upbringing the protagonist dreamed of in Midnight in Paris and the gap year of a struggling musician. If you don't mind me saying in a good way. My dad is fairly well known in the programming world, but it never really resonated with us. He would work crazy hours to develop new programs, yet still find time to be an incredible dad. I remember he used to eat espresso beans plain because he felt that they worked better than drinking espresso. Whenever he would have a new app or idea done, he would have us demo it on video as the typical user. I only recently realized what a big deal he was when I was working in DC and there was a big tech conference he was speaking at. He invited me to the cocktail reception afterwards and every single person wanted to talk to him. It was insane. The biggest takeaway for me was what an incredible dad he was not sacrificing his family for work he obviously loved and excelled at. The eating coffee beans bit is so funny. This is kinda dark but I have a very famous father among the opera classical music theater people, yet he was emotionally abusive. It's so surreal having everyone think this is the greatest man they've ever met while behind closed doors my mother and I were in a living heck. When my mother eventually spoke up about the abuse to her so-called friends, everyone chastised her for being a lying bee and trying to stain this amazing man's name. When I spoke up about it, these people would tell me I was a horrible ungrateful child or would go to heck for hating my wonderful father. In short, a myriad of other things happened. My mom divorced. We tried escaping him, the court gave the butthole joint custody, his mother, my grandmother, came into the picture and was exactly like him but 100x worse and physically abusive. She tried drowning me one day, threatened to strangle me and my dog, etc. All while people told me they envied my perfect life with such an amazing and talented family, hoping I would continue their legacy in the fine arts as an opera singer. Heck no. Eventually mom and I escaped to another country for two years and we've never seen them since. I'm glad you don't see them anymore and hope you're okay. What about unusual environments that weren't positive? LOL. I grew up in a hoarder house. I couldn't really have friends over and we rarely had any guests. Before I got my own room, I shared one with my sister. I had to climb over junk to get to my bed. I also had mushrooms. Yes. Literal mushrooms, growing in between my bed and the wall. In elementary school, I used to crumple up my bad grade papers and just throw them in between my bed and the wall. Nobody noticed the mushrooms, so they sure as heck won't check my paper. When my brother eventually moved out, I got his room, around 13-14. It had the same black mold problems as the rest of the house, but I would scrub it every year. Until I moved out, it was the cleanest room in the house. I vacuumed it a few times a week. No animals were allowed in my room. My mom had a ton of animals that would pee and poop everywhere. I burned incense constantly to get the smell out and I always cleaned. But after like, 8, 9, I couldn't have any friends over. My house was too dirty for that. 
I was known as the smelly kid until I started doing my own laundry as a teenager. My mother and her husband continued to be hoarders long after I moved out, tried to clean their house at least twice. When we tried to shampoo the carpets, it turned to sludge. Just had to get rid of all the carpets. Tried to throw stuff away. Every time I put broken stuff out on the curb, my stepdad would bring it right back in. We can use this broken lamp. Like, dude, you have at least 10 broken lamps in your house with random crap piled on top of them. You don't need this one. LOL. It's nice having my own house where I know I won't have to live that way again. I grew up in rural Alaska and my parents were dog mushers for about 20 years. We had maybe 30-40 dogs at the peak when I was 12 years old and they all had to be trained every other day. It was my job and my brother's job to feed them all and scoop poop. It was fun but a lot of hard work. Dad treated all the dogs himself, worming them, sewing them up if they got hurt, etc. We had this old diesel truck with a massive building on the back that you could walk inside that had dozens of cubbies in the walls for transporting the dogs to races and to get vaccines. 2008 hit and my parents had to give most of them away to other mushers to make ends meet and that was the end of that. I miss those dogs sometimes. My dad was an addict with severe mental health issues who was a member of the Hells Angels. My mom and I lived in women's shelters for short periods of time when he would decide to kick us out in the middle of the night or if they got into a fight. He got off the hard drugs and turned into a raging narcissist, moved 3000 miles away and sent me photos of his wonderful new life without me. Wasn't great, but my mom did all that she thought she could with what we had. I grew up in an Ivy League college town, which both my parents worked for as history professors. I always took it for granted until I went to college and then I realized how well they had set me up for the world. They were constantly asking to read my work and I think that greatly improved my writing skills and soft skills, like taking and giving helpful feedback. I feel like I just approach the world with a very inquisitive mindset and I think I have them to thank for that. Being the daughter of a lighthouse keeper was quite unusual. There are no lighthouse keepers in Scotland anymore. When I was young I dreamed of growing up to be the first female lighthouse keeper. I always wanted to be a lighthouse keeper when I grew up too. Everyone thought I was super weird, but I was happiest as a kid when I was by myself reading so I imagined building my dream library inside a lighthouse and living out my days that way while making sure no boats crashed. When I was 14, my parents sold our house, cars, and 90% of our belongings and we moved onto a boat. Unfortunately, there were some big repairs that needed to be done on the boat and we had more and more problems with it. So when I was 15, they sold the boat and we traveled by plane train cars around the world to 24 different countries for about 8 months. We came home when I was 16 and I started my senior year of high school and things have been normal ever since. I wouldn't trade my experience for anything, but traveling all the time can be very isolating. I was away from all of my friends for 3 of my teenage years, and my friend group had pretty much split apart by the time I had gotten back. It was also hard to come home to my small town in the Midwest USA after having traveled the world and having nobody to share my experience with. Everything, in a sense, had been just like I left it. It was disorienting. Something people ask me about all the time is what about school I've been homeschooled since first grade, so school wasn't really an issue or any big change for me while we were traveling. I did an online math program, studied French out of a book, and kept a travel journal, and those were the only three school things I did during my junior year, lol. One long lasting effect I've had from the trip is that I am now pretty minimalistic. Living out of a backpack for 8 months teaches you how much you really can live without. I don't own very many items now, although I have allowed myself to start hoarding books again. That's my one splurge. I grew up with bohemian parents. I was born in the 80s and didn't live in a house with a flushing toilet until I was 14. When my parents were still married, we lived in what I can best describe as a Lincoln log cabin with my dad's own version of the Louvre glass pyramid on top of it. We did have a shower, but more often than not, there were baby ducks or swans living in there. We had a wood stove, but no heating on the upper floor, which was connected to the log cabin level by half a staircase and half a ladder over a rock pit. This was all on an island, 
so I was driven by boat to and from school every day, or walked on the ice, or stayed home if neither worked. I feel like I'm rambling on now. I'm sorry OP. If you want more, I have it lol. Like when the chickens had to move into the kitchen over winter. For context, we were not poor. During this same time we went on skiing vacations in the Alps and dad went to science conferences in Hong Kong etc. My dad was a drug dealer. As long as I was alive he never worked. It definitely took a toll on him providing for kids but he pulled it off. Always spending time with him was nice. Although we didn't get to go on any vacations or anything like that. For the longest time I didn't really understand what working looked like or how you even pay or file taxes so I had some pretty big shocks later in life. Due to a very bitter divorce that resulted in financial ruin, my family had to live in a derelict office building my mom owned. For a while, we had utilities and were able to have a semi-normal life. Eventually though, power and water were cut off. We had limited food and water access, had to bathe with a water hose and wash our clothes in a bin and hang dry it. Rodents and bugs eventually became an issue as did black mold, which my sisters and I are allergic to. It wasn't great. I often wonder why my mom had us live in those conditions and how no one called children's services. Sometimes I wish they had as the experience was very dangerous, traumatic, and alienating. I think the entire ordeal has made my siblings and I more resourceful and resilient but it was very difficult. We were in this situation for about 3 years. My dad worked 365 days a year from the time I was 9ish to 18ish. Single parent household meant I was constantly by myself. He went into work at about 11am and came home about 11pm as well. In all those years he probably had a total of 20 days off. In all those years I probably had 20 conversations with him. It fricked me up, man. A father should be there for his children. I get it though. My parents are the firstborn in their family and each one has 12 siblings. They eloped in the late 70s to the US and had me less than a year after they arrived. They met a guy who knew a guy from their hometown and they became good friends. This guy owned apartment buildings and so they were lucky enough to get set up with a giant 3 bedroom apartment. Little by little each of their siblings migrated over and stayed with them. By the time I was 5ish I was living in this apartment being raised by about 10-15 of my aunts and uncles. All kids and teenagers. Some had their own place some stayed with us. But all came and went all day long as this was the biggest spot and central to everyone. It was an amazing experience. The house was always full of laughter. And never boring. The oldest at that time were my parents at about 24 years old. Everyone else were young enough to play all day with me, but old enough to make sure I didn't go down a wrong path in life. I discovered the world as they were discovering it. They were amazed by the slightest things because their little town didn't have the modern tech and luxuries that existed in downtown Los Angeles in the 80s. So for example when they would come in and explode in enthusiastic energy about how they just rode an elevator, I would feel the excitement and want to go see this magical room that moves. I learned to appreciate simplicity and have a fascination with how things work, because of this. They also helped each other succeed by sharing resources and connections to jobs, housing, etc. Little by little they each became successful in their own way. They all own their own homes now and often remind me of how I was a shared kid since at some point or another they each raised me. I love them all and am thankful for the experience. Of all the replies, I like this one the best. Not sure this is that unusual, but when I was in high school my parents moved to Europe and sent me to boarding school. It forced me to grow up really quickly and in hindsight was an amazing advantage by the time I got to college. At the time it was pretty hard to adapt, but ultimately I am grateful for the experience. My dad was very well known in the water park designing industry, but he never really let on how well known he was. He told me that he had worked with big names such as Celine Dion she wanted a water park built for her son. And Eddie Van Halen he had a guitar shaped pool designed by his company. I didn't realize it until sadly he passed away of a heart attack and hundreds of people came to his funeral. This is before COVID. Apparently people from all over the world were sending the company condolence emails. I was really amazed that so many people around the world knew his name but he never told us. He was very humble. This is such an interesting response. Your dad sounds like he was a very cool and talented person. 
I don't know if being raised in a military family counts but I moved around the US and part of England from the time I was born until age 12, never staying in one place for more than 2 years at a time. I'll tell you this much, it sucks basically always being the new kid but that had its unspoken advantages. I got really, really good at getting to know people where I went. To this day one of my personality quirks is that I can get to know practically anybody quickly because that's just how the chips fell when I was younger. Same. Moved every two years until I graduated high school. It really does get easy to meet and know new people. But for me I never really learned how to make lasting friendships. You kinda move away and move on. I always wondered what it was like for kids who grew up in the same house. Same bedroom. Same friends and whatnot their whole life. My mom is a published author and sometimes she goes to different conventions to give speeches about personal development stuff. She's not the best mother but not the worst either. She can be pretty selfish and she doesn't seem to understand me and my brother very much. You would expect her to be a lot more empathetic and better at emotional control. But she acts very childish a lot of the time. That's very perceptive of you. It is hard to be objective about a parent but you seem to be trying to have a balanced view. Wasn't me but met a family that had spent close to a decade touring the world on a 30 something foot sailboat. I didn't don't know them well. I was their guest for Thanksgiving weekend almost 20 years ago. They were family friends with the girl I was dating at the time. They'd had a kid underway and lived on the boat for the next 7ish years. I met them a couple years later when the kid was around 10. My biggest impression was this dude's insane sense of balance. They had a jungle gym swing set deal in their backyard, and the kid really enjoyed walking along the top crossbar of the swing set while people were swinging, making the already narrow bar sway back and forth. I hope that didn't fade over time, I'd like to imagine he's out there somewhere walking tightropes for fun. My dad was a known genius within the agricultural cotton industry. He is very mechanically smart and has helped made processing cotton faster and more efficient for places all around the world. Yet very few people knew that he was a 9th grade dropout who never set foot in a college. I think probably the biggest thing I deal with is other people's expectations just because of who my father is. People seem to expect a lot out of me and it gets overwhelming at times because it sometimes makes me feel like everyone will always see me as my father and not just for me. People expect me to get into the same industry and carry on what he made. People expect me to always be formal and perfect. People expect me to be my dad. I think what makes people's expectations so difficult to deal with sometimes is the fact that my dad's expectations are just the opposite. He doesn't want me to get into the industry just out of obligation. He wants me to succeed in what I'm passionate about. He doesn't want me to break over trying to be perfect. If anything, he'd rather me own my freak ups and learn from it. Don't get me wrong. I'm so thankful that my father is all for me forging my own path than taking the one he already made. However I'll admit that dealing with these conflicting expectations growing up really creates confusion. The cotton industry just isn't for me. Yet, yeah, your username suggests you're far more into wool. My mother joined a doomsday cult when I was 10. She threw away my records and books. Told me to pack a bag to be ready to go to the bomb shelter. It was weird and scary. Lot of military families here, my story is a different side of the same coin. My mom was an American diplomat which meant we moved on average every 2-3 to three years, either to a new totally random country, or back to the Washington DC area for re-education new language training. My parents each had decent French Spanish Czech and my sister and I managed to get pretty good Spanish. Moving so much is tough and despite Facebook I don't have a single friend I've managed to keep in touch with who I met before I was basically a high school senior. On the flip side it was totally incredible to experience so many different cultures and I wouldn't trade my childhood for anyone's. Shameless plug. Join the state department. Their application rates are at all time lows and the world needs more talking and less shooting. How things change. I would have loved to join the state department rather than go to law school but you couldn't get a job there for anything. Or at least I couldn't. Luckily, I'm happy as a lawyer. My parents built a 53 foot schooner when I was a kid. And during my freshman year of high school, 1991, 
We sailed through the South Pacific from Southern California. We spent 6 months in Tonga for hurricane season. And there were only 3 other kids who spoke English another sailboat, but smaller. We learned a lot about how to survive on tropical islands because we did lots of fishing, building small fires, learning about the wildlife, fishing, free diving. We were homeschooled and my dad even had to reattach some of my braces on my teeth at one point. We were privileged in that we had a fair amount of money. My parents also built a catamaran when they got married and sailed around the world as very young adults in 1970. Even in 1991 we had bare basics. GPS wasn't widespread so we had Navstar. For weather we had to listen to ham radio. We left Tonga too early after hurricane season and got caught in a cyclone and were tossed on 20 foot waves for 2 days before my parents managed to break us free and we limped back to Tonga with a broken bowsprit, ripped sails, and some snapped rigging. I was not much help because I was violently seasick, and my siblings are 3 and 6 years younger than me. They went back when they were in their 60s and my brother was on his own small boat with his wife. I've also owned 3 sailboats at this point that I fixed up. I almost feel like being out there is more natural than dealing with real society, even though I have a very real professional job. What an incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing that. My grandmother has been taking care of special needs adults for 30 plus years. They have lived in her home with us the entire time. I know it's unusual just don't know if it's interesting to hear about. For my grandmother she always saw them and treated them as her own children. They all were very well taken care of. We had six of them my grandmother was taking care of at one time was the most. Six of them were basically toddlers in adult bodies. They can't get up and do normal stuff. They mostly sit in a big room together with a TV. One of them is in a wheelchair and was born mentally disabled. It's like taking care of a 6 month old baby. Except he's now 47 with Parkinson's and other disabilities. He's usually the most happy out of the group. You can talk to him but he doesn't have words just noises, but by far has the most outgoing I guess for his situation. The other two are both blind and one is almost completely deaf. One's a guy and a woman in their 40s. Again they can't speak either just sounds. They can walk themselves to the bathroom but you need to guide them to the wall and once their hand is on the wall they can get to the bathroom, they can eat themselves, but can't cook or anything obviously. We put their food in bowls so it's easier for them. Those two were born mentally disabled and about as smart as a one year old maybe a little more. The last guy is severely autistic along with being mentally disabled. He is 32 years old and can be a handful sometimes, but can do most stuff himself. He has the mental capability of a 6 or 7 year old, so I could say to him hey when you're done with your toys clean them up and he can. But just about anything you ask him he will say yes wanna jump out of a plane he'll say yes. I consider them all my family but him more a brother just because we are the same age and grew up together. The last two passed away, one in 2003 and the other in 2006. But yay my entire life they've lived and been taken care of by my grandparents. You and your grandparents sound like very strong and special people to welcome these people with additional needs into your hearts. When I was little, my dad was into some sort of car racing. Not NASCAR or anything big like that. I couldn't tell you the specifics of the sport, but for the car nerds out there I do recall that his racing cars were myatus. I spent a lot of weekends bored out of my mind around racetracks. It didn't occur to me until at least a decade later that not everyone spent their childhood doing that. My best friend when I was in preschool was his race friend's daughter. So her life wasn't any different. He tried to get me into racing gockets, but I wasn't having it. Too loud and too fast. This was my dad's childhood as well, but growing up around a dirt track. It wasn't until middle school that he realized that not everyone had a race car in their garage, and spent a significant amount of time making their own fiberglass, and working on cars. My childhood was pretty normal but when I was 18 myself and two friends decided to start a traveling circus. We to raid every state in America for years. It was grubby, smelly, and sometimes dangerous, but it was an amazing time in my life. Absolutely incredible. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.